very passionate about property and real estate coming from that pleasure and pain of owning properties. My dream is for all Indonesians to own their own home. And um, you know, if you rational why property, uh, why this sector, aside from the fact that I'm very emotionally um, attached to it, right? Uh, it's something I've been also experiencing myself and very close to my heart. It is a real big problem. So millennials, um, 81% of millennials don't have their own property. Uh, perhaps Indonesia has somewhere at 20% of, of its productive age population is on property. Um, and that, if you compare it with Singapore, for example, Singapore has 95% property ownership. Um, average Indonesians spend uh, or transact property 0.2, 0.3 times in their lifetime versus maybe other Southeast Asian counterparts, they transact 1.5 times or more in their lifetime. I would say the simple answer is that I have a male CTO co-founder with mutually exclusive skill sets, experience sets, and interpersonality. <laughs> but we're both very fully aligned on our vision and passion for real estate. So it's a diverse founding team. We came from completely different walks of life. I'm born and raised here. He's a Singaporean. I spent the majority of my career in business strategy consultancy. And he spent significant professional life in Silicon Valley working down the trenches as a programmer for SaaS tech startups. I'm an optimist and a risk taker. He's a risk averse, very realist, very pragmatic. Um, somehow our, our journey overlap at Gojek. And so all this diversity in skill sets and perspectives in the founding team really help us to be um, more grounded, more aware, more open, and at the same time also more innovative and creative in approaching uh, and, and solving day-to-day -day problems. I think it's a topic that's that's close to my heart. It, unconscious bias is everywhere. It's it's happening every day. No single individual is, is free of bias. Every decision that we make is a product of our biases, right? Our, our brain is working every second, every minute of every day to help us make judgments and decisions quickly. And it's happening without us being aware. And I think to overcome unconscious bias, the first step, the very first step is to really acknowledge that it exists, that your worldview and ev everyone else's will never be fully objective, right? And I've had um, people pull me aside. This is an example. Um, of biases and it doesn't always work against you it could also work for you um, I've had people pull me aside after a formal meeting or conversation and tell me implicitly in a respectful manner that because I'm a female I'm more empathetic and and that it's better to negotiate with me than my male co-founder so they prefer to talk to me and that's a that's a bias it's it's called halo effect right um, and then there's a um, other, uh, um, maybe other circumstances, uh, other occasions, clients who don't know me, uh, when I step into a room with a male colleague, they would think that my, my male colleague is the CEO of Finhome. And I've gone to property project sites where people, uh, you know, construction vendors uh, ask me, where's Finhome CEO? I heard it, um, that he's going to visit. So, so there's, there's, that, there's that bias called stereotyping. Because in real estate, you rarely see um, uh, you know, female CEO, and so your brain just uh, does it work to uh, quickly make judgment and decisions. And this brings me to the second point in overcoming bias, which is to detach action from intent, right? So everything you see this happening, and when this bias working for you or against you, don't take it personally. Don't get upset, right? Just believe that everyone has has a um, you know has a has a good intention. Um, and that, and that, um, um, it's something that you have to just calibrate, right? Everyone is uncalibrated. It's your responsibility to to help them calibrate. Just like when I'm becoming unconsciously uh, biased, then I will have people and system around me to help me uh, kind of refocus and realign. And so, um, if every time I see biases against me and I get upset, I would be upset most of the time, and that's that negative emotion would just drag me down and uh, hamper productivity and prevent me from doing my best. So then the third and last point uh, to overcome bias is basically to work against it, to work against these biases through sets of rules, sets of procedures, making sure there's enough representations of many different, uh, let's say, genders uh, or other elements or aspects so that when um, as you make a decision that's 
influenced by or your own biases, it can be somehow calibrated well, right? So, for example, in um, one of the common um, manifestations of biases is in in hiring, or in promotion, or in um, upward salary adjustment, or in rotation decisions uh, in in our organization. So we make sure that there's enough representations of um, different age, different gender. So when we make that decision, it's not based on um, some inherent characteristics that are not related to performance, for example. I couldn't emphasize enough the importance. It, both are extremely critical, right? mentorship and sponsorship. So without support of mentors and patrons, I don't think I would have gone this far and would have been an impossible journey, especially for Pinhom. I think Pinhom would have probably not even be here, right? I benefited from extremely uh, important lessons of entrepreneurship from some of the best leaders and entrepreneurs that I've worked with uh, throughout my uh, professional career. I gained confidence uh, starting my um, entrepreneurial journey because I've gotten a um, venture capital um, partner who kept reminding me that, hey, they would back me whatever I might do next, whatever sector that might be, whatever business model. And and uh, the, the, the first investor that, that brought check for Pinhome, pre-product, pre-revenue, right? It was just based off idea. Um, said that, hey, we brought first check for you, pre-revenue, pre-product, because we believe in your abilities to execute and build enduring company. They haven't even given us anything, but just that support uh, and that, um, uh, what you call it, encouragement, right? That was really transfer transformational for me. And that got uh, us, the founding team, started Pinhome uh, in, in 2019 because we knew that we we have them as our champion. So I think with that we felt like nothing, uh, no problems, no challenges were big enough, and then and then that, that we cannot tackle. So we get the audacity and energy to go past the most challenging hurdles and, and, and building and growing business exclusively in pandemic. <laughs> always tough questions um, what advice do you have for other uh, aspiring entrepreneurs especially female entrepreneurs and my advice will be very simple for any aspiring female entrepreneurs and leaders just forget about the female part and just focus on the entrepreneur and leader aspect I personally consider myself as an entrepreneur and leader full stop right and try not to focus too much on the female aspect of it and this not this might not make sense for you in the beginning but think about it this way right irrespective of gender um, Expectations towards leadership in technology are the same. I think leaders are not, you know, a title or a position. It is a state. It's a state of mind where, and state of being where one's vision and aspirations inspire and mobile, mobilize others, right? And if you are that person whose vision and aspirations inspire and mobilize others, you're a leader. Whether you're men or women, the qualities that constitute good leadership are just basically the same, right? It's about being visionary, it's about being innovative, creative, uh, you have to have integrity, honesty, you have to have passion and commitment, you have to be purposeful in your communication so that you can inspire others, you need to be empathetic, you have to have empathy and understanding, so it's all the same. So as leaders in technology, uh, men or women, we need to, of course, have a purpose and vision and mission to make the world a better place uh, through technology.